Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is Perseverance, and somewhere right there is the Ingenuity Helicopter. And, well, it's time for the updates and explanations on what's been going on with the incredible helicopter currently doing some really insane tricks on Mars. Okay, not actual tricks, but some really incredible achievements nevertheless. And you might have actually heard in the news that it unfortunately failed its fourth trial or its fourth flight after successfully performing three separate flights. But that's not entirely true, it didn't actually fail anything, mostly because what happened to it is essentially the same type of an error, same software mistake that it initially had before its first flight. And this is a known issue which you can sort of learn about by watching one of the NASA streams I'm posting in the description below. In short though, just to kind of help you understand what's happening here, they discovered that there was a software bug and there were two possible solutions to this bug. Either re-upload everything, including basically the entire new operating system, or find some sort of a shortcut. And that shortcut was a command that they sent to the helicopter to essentially tell it to force start its engines. Now, I'm actually oversimplifying all of this, but that's the nutshell of their solution. That solution, though, would only work about 80% of the time. And it just so happens that on the fourth flight, they once again had the same mistake. But all they had to do is give the helicopter just a little bit more time to process its information and then try again. And essentially, it worked and now the helicopter had four successful flights each of them demonstrating something a little bit more difficult every single time. So as you know already, the first flight was basically just to hover a little bit and to stay in the air at an altitude of about 3 meters. The second flight took it a little bit higher, it was about 16 feet or 5 meters above the ground, and it also flew for about 51 seconds. But then it also did this, and this is actually the impressive part. It sort of tilted a little bit, moving approximately 2 meters to the side. It also did a bit of a turn and this was really important because this allowed the scientists to test its sensors which essentially use the camera that produces black and white images and these sensors are able to detect various features on the ground and then automatically use those um, features to create a map of where the helicopter is traveling. And this is actually the most impressive part in the helicopter. It's able to process these images, form a map, and it, it does so really fast. It, it has a really, really fast processor. And from what I've read, it's about 100 times faster than the processor in the Perseverance rover. So basically by processing all of these features, it builds a map and it can then even use these uh, maps to send them to Perseverance to sort of tell the rover where it should be going next. And that's one of the potential future missions for the helicopter. It's basically going to serve as a kind of a scout slash guidance beacon if of course the helicopter survives for at least a few more weeks. But during the third flight, it achieved something even more impressive by essentially this time flying all the way across the field for approximately 50 meters or so and then returning back to the same spot and landing once again. And it was doing so at a speed of about 2 meters per second. So it was actually flying pretty fast and everything went brilliantly well. You'll actually see it returning any second now. Now this was really really beyond the expectations and at this point when the helicopter landed this was officially all of the requirements for this mission. Essentially, at the time that the helicopter landed after the third attempt, all of the plans for this mission were accomplished. And so technically, the mission is sort of over now. Everything after this is an extra. So the fourth flight was an extra, and the plan now is to push the helicopter to its limits, to try to see what doesn't work. But apparently, and here's one of the more beautiful color images that the helicopter took while flying, with the shadow visible right there on the bottom. Anyway, so apparently, the scientists behind this mission were exceptionally surprised by the fact that all of the theoretical predictions of how the helicopter is going to fly have so far been basically 100% correct. They actually expected something to be different. They expected maybe the air to be a little bit different, maybe the friction or some kind of a problem with maybe static electricity, but none of this has occurred. So far, everything has been sort of as predicted. And this is really mind-blowing. It means that their theoretical models were way, way beyond expectations. And every single thing they've set out to do so far has been accomplished, which is already really mind-blowing as well. But in that particular video, they also sort of explain how the helicopter does all of this by itself. So first of all, the instructions have to be sent to the Perseverance first, and then the Perseverance transmits them to the helicopter. Once the instructions are set and once everything is ready to go, the helicopter does everything automatically by using its black and white camera that you see uh, taking pictures right now, and sort of tracking all of the information using the camera and creating these models I mentioned previously. So basically it tracks the motion, tracks the ground underneath, and it does all of this in real time, 
while also measuring its position, velocity, altitude, and making sure that all of the instructions are followed as they're supposed to be followed. And in this video, you can kind of see that the green here is essentially what's being tracked, whereas the red is what's being rejected. But there are a few issues with this. There is actually a limit to how fast the images can be processed, and because of this, there's a limit to how fast a helicopter can technically fly. The speed in this case is most likely to be stuck at that 2 meters per second. Anything faster, and the camera is just unable to process them fast enough, and this means that the Ingenuity helicopter is no longer able to process the information and follow the instructions correctly. Naturally, by using a faster processor and possibly some sort of a solution to this in the future, faster speeds can be achieved as well. But not in this particular helicopter, this one is just a test model. And also, obviously, because Mars is covered with dust, the camera can also kind of get dirty, and because of this dust um, accumulating on the camera lens, with time there's a chance that the tracking will probably degrade and the speed will have to be reduced even more, or something else will have to be changed. But only a few hours ago from when I'm making this video, the helicopter also completed its fourth flight. We don't really have a video for this yet, it's going to be coming out soon, but the helicopter apparently took a lot of pictures while flying around. It stayed in the air for 117 seconds and flew for about 133 meters or 436 feet one way and then same distance back. So in total, it was able to travel about 872 feet or about 266 meters. So definitely quite an impressive achievement when you think about it, considering the fact that the atmosphere is only 1% of atmosphere of planet Earth. And with at least one more flight planned for the next few days, we're going to possibly even hear about some greater achievements from this mission. But at the moment, as I mentioned, everything has been completed. So now everything is basically extra. And from what the scientists mentioned in the stream, one thing that will change in the next few weeks is going to be the frequency of flights. So because the primary mission is complete here, the majority of resources are now going to be shifted to the Perseverance rover and its exploration of everything around it, you know, drilling rocks and so on. And the flight will happen maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks, but just to help Perseverance, not so much for any other reasons. So the helicopter is now going to become, as I mentioned, a kind of a beacon. It's going to explore, it's going to provide potential locations for the rover to go to. And at the same time, this is also going to be an amazing test for this technique as a reliable way to explore in some of the next missions, upcoming missions in the future as well. Also, don't forget that NASA is planning to send the helicopter known as Dragonfly to the moon of Saturn known as Titan. This one is going to be relatively similar and very similar techniques will be used to move it around, but instead of using solar panels, it's actually going to have its own nuclear power generator. The RTG that you see right there sticking out from its butt. And so this mission, the one on Mars right now, is going to be a perfect opportunity to test all of these techniques. And because Titan has a very thick atmosphere and also a lot less gravity than Mars, you can actually have very, very effective flight on the surface of that planet. But there are going to be some other challenges, such as extremely cold temperatures and possibly some other problems we can't even imagine right now. Okay, um, what else? Oh yeah, so there were some really cool facts we've learned about the helicopter that I didn't know before, such as, for example, the maximum altitude or why the helicopter tends to fly at this altitude of about 5 meters. It actually has something to do with the camera once again. Through various tests, the scientists determined that the sweet spot for essentially taking pictures and tracking ground underneath was, uh, is, well, basically 16 feet or 5 meters. Anything above that and it becomes a little bit difficult, anything below that and you'll have to probably fly slower. So at the moment for this model of a helicopter, this is the perfect altitude. The other interesting question that was brought up is how long can this helicopter stay in the air? What's sort of the limit of the battery? And it turns out the battery is actually not the limit at all in this case. The helicopter has more than enough battery to survive for a very long time. Apparently it's the temperature. So it turns out because of the way that the blades are spinning at like ridiculously high speeds and also because of how much processing is going on on the inside, every single second ingenuity increases in temperature by about 1 degree Celsius. That means that after about 2 minutes it's about 120 degrees Celsius hotter. Those of you from the US, the boiling temperature of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So it just gets too hot to basically function. And because of this, it needs to take those breaks. And according to the scientists, two minutes right now is going to be the official limit. But they think that they can push it to fly for about 600 meters in those two minutes. That will be more than a double of distance of the current record it's set. 
And the other question that many people had was essentially, so when do they think that the helicopter is going to be sort of officially finished? In this case, the scientists mentioned that because the helicopter is only going to be flying maybe once a week or maybe once every two weeks, at some point it's basically going to fall behind Perseverance rover. And when the distance becomes too great and they're unable to communicate, the helicopter is basically going to enter the sleep mode and essentially probably stay in that mode until the battery expires or until something else happens. And so once the connection is lost, that's when officially the helicopter part of the mission will be over as well. But one of the major changes that we're going to notice in the next week or so is the fact that we're not going to be seeing these pictures anymore. Perseverance right now is basically just standing there taking photos of the helicopter and it's not doing its primary mission. The scientists are now going to switch to Perseverance, let it roll around, let it explore, dig some rocks and so on, and it's going to let helicopter do its own thing. Which means that we're not going to be seeing this, but we are going to be hearing about it until that one day when the communication is lost and the helicopter stays behind. But even with that assumption, the scientists still expect it to function for possibly a few months, maybe even a year. And so its main mission is going to be flying around, taking the uh, imagery, creating the maps, sending those maps to Perseverance, and letting it plan ahead where it's going to be moving. But one day it's going to fall behind, unfortunately. And so sometime in the next few months, NASA is probably going to tell us that the helicopter is officially lost. That's going to be sad, but also it's already achieved so much, so we're not going to be that sad. Now, before I finish this video, I also wanted to mention the fact that apparently, and this might actually apply to those of you who are programmers or have used GitHub in some capacity, since a lot of the software used um, in Ingenuity is open source, or actually all of the software, they are now giving away these badges that pretty much all of the people responsible for making that software are going to receive. It's this cute badge you see right here. And so if you are using GitHub, and if you ever contributed to any open source project that this mission is using, you automatically get this as a gift. And even though I've used GitHub and contributed to some open source projects, it was not the ones for the mission, so I never got it. And that's kind of unfortunate. It's a really cool badge. But anyway, those of you on GitHub, check out your profile. You might have that badge already. And since 12,000 contributors are responsible for making this mission happen software-wise, well, it is actually a kind of a nice reward. Nothing financial, obviously, but still a cool reward nevertheless. And these are just some of the open source modules that were used in creation of the Ingenuity software. Anyway, so we still have at least one major flight to go that is going to be documented and filmed by Perseverance. And after this, we're going to be hearing more and more about some additional flights, which will probably be achieving something else as well. But for now, well, technically, the mission is officially complete. Definitely an incredible achievement. And well, there are no words to express how most of us probably feel about this. This is just really, really incredible. Now, all of the videos I'm using are actually from the JPL channel. You can find this in the description below. And um, the stream that I mentioned is also there as well. The answers to some of the very common questions are in that stream, so it's sort of worth watching. But on that note, well, until we hear some other incredible news from the mission, that's all I wanted to mention. It's definitely really, really cool. Everything so far in this mission has gone even better than planned. And except for wishing congratulations and more success to the scientists behind this mission, I guess there's nothing else to add for now. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.